Hi, I'm Phyllis from southernfrugal.com. Today we're going to make a, a cheese, ham, cabbage, potato casserole. And I'm doing that with this little pack of ham. Mr. Bucky bought this and said, can you do something with that? So, yes I can. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, put this in a pan of boiling water for five or so minutes and then I'm going to dump it out and rinse it. And the reason I am is because it's got about three different types of preservatives in it. So maybe that'll get rid of some of it. But anyway, we're going to start out with a 10 ounce pack of Carolina Pride smoked cubed ham. And I know that putting it in the water and everything will take away some of the taste of it, but I'd rather get rid of the preservatives or as much as I can. All right, so here's what else we're going to use. This is about seven medium-sized red potatoes. Now, why use red potatoes? Because they freeze really well. So this casserole is going to be enough for six people. And so I'm going to actually freeze four servings and we'll have, excuse me, two today. So I'm going to peel these and then I'm going to make the slices the same size by doing it on here. I don't have one of those little mandolins. I'm always going to get one. Every time I go to Bed Bath & Beyond, I always end up getting something else and I don't get it. So I'm going to use this old-fashioned grater and make the potato slices the same size. Okay, so we're also going to use one half head of cabbage. Just one half head and I'm going to cut this in shreds. Not really big shreds, but small shreds. And we're going to use four cups of sharp cheddar cheese. And I did grade this myself. I think it's more moist when you do it yourself. And we're going to make a white sauce with two cups of milk, four tablespoons of butter, and four tablespoons of all-purpose flour. And to make it different than just the ordinary casserole, we're going to add about an eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg. It, you won't know it's nutmeg in there, but it'll give it a different taste and it'll be really good. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and peel my potatoes, cut my cabbage in shreds, and get my ham in some boiling water. And it's going to take four pots to do this, but in the end, you know, you'll have a lot, so it doesn't matter. But uh, the other thing is, when you're making this, if you make two of them, one of them freezes really well because these potatoes freeze really well. And uh, if you'll notice, when you look at frozen, like Stouffer frozen dinners and, and even stir-fry things, they always use red potatoes, and they do because they freeze so well. So, and that's why I use red potatoes, plus I like the way they taste. So, we're going to go ahead and get all the work done and get everything cooking. I'll end up par-cooking the cabbage for about 20 minutes, the potatoes for about five minutes, and the ham, I'll just kind of let it go along, you know, maybe five or min minutes, maybe 10, I don't know, and drain it, and uh, then we'll be ready to put this together. So we'll be back in, I don't know, 15 minutes? Yeah, 15 minutes, we'll be back. Okay, we are back. The cabbage has been steamed for about 15, maybe 20 minutes. The potatoes were cooked for five minutes because they're gonna come all apart if you cook them longer than that. You want the thin slices and you wanna be able to pick them up, so you only wanna cook them just a little bit in boiling water. Of course, the ham cooked, it has that kind of slimy stuff on it. I guess that's the preservatives. So I rinsed it off, put it in boiling water, boiled it for five minutes, dumped that water off and rinsed it real good again. It still tastes like ham because I tasted of it. So anyway, so now we're ready to make our uh, white sauce. And this is just a standard white sauce that we all learned to make in home ec years and years ago. But it can be used for just many, many different things. So what we have put in the pot to uh, melt are the four tablespoons of butter. I've got my burner on medium. Adding four tablespoons of all-purpose flour. I'm just going to stir that around and we want that just to get bubbly. Go ahead and 
ahead and put some salt in there. Now I'm going to use a good half a teaspoon, maybe a little more, because we don't have any salt in the cabbage or in the uh, potatoes. Of course, the ham would be a little salty, but not much, because I uh, cooked it a little bit. All right, so we want this to just barely get bubbly. You see that? Let me move closer. You see it's just barely bubbling. I'm going to turn the burner back down now to medium. And now we're going to add the two cups of milk. And this is whole milk. You could use 2%. You could even use the non-fat dry milk, 1% milk, skim milk, whatever you want. I just like the whole milk in this. So we're going to dump it all in at one time. And then we're just going to stir it constantly until it gets almost to the boiling point. You don't want it to boil, but just almost there. So this is going to take five or six minutes. So we'll be back. The sauce has now thickened, and it took about five minutes. You don't want it to boil. So I've cut my burner off, and I'm actually lifting it off the burner because I do not want it to boil. Now I'm going to add about another fourth cup of milk to this because I want it a little bit thinner than that. And I'm also going to go ahead and add one eighth teaspoon of ground nutmeg. All right, so let me get the milk. So hold on a second. Mix that up really good. Just about a fourth of a cup, just to thin it out just a little bit. So now we're ready to start uh, the assembly of this little uh, casserole. So we'll be back and we'll have to move y'all to the other side. Hold on. All right, we are ready to assemble this uh, little casserole. Now I had dumped my potatoes out in a plate to somewhat cool and the cabbage is somewhat cool. So the first thing we're going to do is just take about half the potatoes and line the bottom of the casserole. Now this is a nine by 13 inch casserole and it's well buttered on the bottom and up the sides a little bit. So we just want to line the bottom really good. Yeah, the potatoes are still a little bit hot. All right. completely lined. Okay, that ought to do it right there. Alright, so now I'm going to just go ahead and give a little extra salt because you all know how potatoes really soak up the salt. Alright, so there are the potatoes. Now I'm going to go ahead and dump all of the cabbage in in this layer. It's uh, completely drained now. Still a little bit warm, so I'm going to dump it all in. And it did, I think I did cook this actually for about 20 minutes. You want it almost done. Okay, now mash that down a little bit. Now we're going to put all of the ham in. That's 10 ounces of cubed smoked ham. I'm going to put all that in at one time. right in that layer there. And I just like to mash it down a little bit because it's going to go down when it cooks anyway, some. All right, so now I'm going to use half of the two cups of shredded cheese. We're going to save the other two cups for the top. dump half of the white sauce over all of this. You only want to use about half of it. That ought to do it. 
do it. I'll just spread that out a little bit. Yeah, I did end up thinning that white sauce out, and I actually ended up using another half cup of milk just to thin it out. All right, so now we're ready for the uh, layer of potatoes again. You want to see if you can't cover all that up. Yeah, I'm going to have to get me, I think they're called mandolins. I'm always meaning to get one, and I never remember it when I go to Bed Bath & Beyond. I should just order it from Amazon. Because I'm always fixing stuff that require something sliced really thin. Can y'all hear my clock? I've got that foyer, uh, foyer door open, so the clock really sounds loud in here in the kitchen. So I ended up using seven medium-sized potatoes, and uh, of course make sure you use the red potatoes so they hold up well to freeze. That is if you're going to freeze it, because we're going to, this is going to make six servings. All right, I'm going to give it a little more salt, and then I'm going to put the cheese on there. I want the cheese covered with some of the, the uh, sauce just because cheese doesn't hold up well, you know, on the, a lot of heat for any length of time in the oven. And I don't like want it browned on top or anything. I want it to look just creamy, creamy, creamy. All right. Let's see if we can spread that out a little bit better. Get all those potatoes covered. I always have to look back and make sure I'm on record because I've actually done videos and thought I was recording and I wasn't. All right, so now we're going to add the rest of this white sauce and I'm going to see if I can't get it covered good. I'm just putting a little stream down. Yeah, and when you're, th these are, you know, not a lot of trouble to make. There are a lot of steps. And so when you're making them, you know, if you have a family of, say, four, they just go ahead and make two of them because they freeze just super well. In fact, if you just want to know the truth, I think they're better when you freeze them and then reheat them. To me, they are anyway. All right, so this is ready to go in the oven, 325 degrees for 30 to 45 minutes, depending on your oven. You just want it to be a little bubbly. And the cabbage will finish cooking and the uh, potatoes, which are almost done, and of course the ham will be cooked also. So we are ready to go in the oven now. I'm going to serve a little uh, uh, baby lettuce combination salad with this and probably some uh, French bread toast, something crunchy with this. It's going to be very good. All right, that's it. 30 to 45 minutes at a 325 degree oven. And again, this is a 9 by 13. And you could certainly make two of them, or you could make it, you know, one of those big Pyrex bowls also. All right, when this gets done and we get the meal ready, we'll be back. All right, here's the casserole in my oven. It took about 45 minutes. It's still bubbling a little bit. Anyway, that's what it looks like. We're going to let it cool for a few minutes. I'm going to go ahead and fix the salad and our iced tea, and we'll be ready to eat. And I will show you what it looks like on the plate. I'm going to make six servings out of this. Four of them I'm going to freeze in those little freezer containers. And uh, two servings we'll have today. All right, we'll be back when I get this on the plates. All right, here's the casserole on the plate. You can sort of see the layers in there. 
and we're having a salad with that. Now this is baby lettuce, about five or six different types, and there's a very thin sliced apple and thin sliced pear and topped with blueberries. There's mine. Of course, we've got our iced tea. Here's the dressing. We love this dressing. It's all gone, but don't worry, I got more. So, it's just raspberry, and it doesn't cause the lettuce to wilt or anything. Yeah, so I love it. All right, there it is. We're going to eat, and uh, we will see y'all next time. Well, let me show you. There's the other servings, and don't worry if some water kind of runs out of it. That's because of the cabbage, but that doesn't hurt a thing. All right, we're ready to eat. We will see y'all next time.